I've done a lot of experimenting on solar sand heaters, and I've developed three of them that I use in my house. Two of them run on AC current, and the third one run directly off the solar panels on DC current. I posted those on some Facebook groups. I've got lots of questions and comments, and people have asked me if I'd make a video of it. This is not going to be a professional video because I don't want to invest in equipment and learn all the ins and outs, but hopefully it'll give you the information that we need to show you what I've done, what works and what doesn't, and I'll have some pictures at the end showing you where I bought the components if anybody is interested in them. A sand heater is just a container with sand in it and a heating element. It's powered by the solar panels that go directly into it heats up the sand during the daytime when the sun's shining, and then at nighttime, all that thermal energy in there radiates back out into the living environment or the house. This big sand heater, which runs directly off of eight 270 watt solar panels in series, will collect up to 12 kWh of energy in Southern Utah on a sunny day. That amounts to 40,000 BTUs of free heat. It's like running a 1500 watt electric heater for eight hours. It will not heat a large room, but it's 100% efficient. What you put into it will eventually rotate out similar to open operating an electric heater. This is our dining room and we got a pretty big kitchen and into the living room. The heat's not going to heat it all up, but it's going to help on the heating bill. Heat pumps like the mini split you see here are 400 to 500 percent efficient. They work great except when they're not very efficient in freezing weather. And they have to work harder the colder the outside air gets. I don't run them below freezing. I'm not an electrician, but I've worked as an engineer for 30 years. And I grew up on a farm back when you made things work and you weren't overly concerned about safety or code compliance. So use any of my ideas at your own risk. About four years ago, I bought several DC solar trailers at auction, have been providing my home and shop with electricity. My electric bill is under $3 a month. In fact, this month is only $1.70 plus a $20 meter fee. I have extra solar panels and capacity. You can see the trailer out there, a couple of trailers back there that I'm working on putting lifting batteries on for some people. So my next step to saving energy is cutting down on my natural gas heating bill. This was one of my first experiments. I had a galvanized pail with sand in it and I went down to thrift store and got a thermostat and an electric frying pan and I put the frying pan down inside of it, the thermostat up on top, it turned off 110 volts. But I got comments saying that the zinc in the galvanized is dangerous. As you can tell, I can hardly breathe as it is, so I quit using that one and started making other ones. This is one I built for the bedroom. It's a 20-pound propane tank. I mounted inside of what used to be the fireplace. I took the guts of it out, put this heater in there. You notice I got a pipe at the top that the air can suck down through, come down and blow out around the heater. It runs off 110 volts. This is the second one that I made. It's out of a 40-gallon propane tank, I think off of a forklift. It has two heating elements in it, and I've got a switch so I can run one or two. They take about 550 watts each. I can run these on 110 volts AC, which comes off my solar panels, onto the battery, through my inverters. And these I can run at night if I need to, if I need more heat, and I've got plenty of battery space on it. Let me show you what it looks like inside real quick. Got different connections in there. 
I'll explain that thermostat thing here in just a minute. This is the thermostats off of a frying pan, and I found these copper sleeves that just happened to fit inside the electrodes, and I put the wire into the other end of it. The thermostat probe on it, I clamped the wire to that in that big heater and put a screw into this tank just so I have it grounded good so it's safe. This is my bigger one that runs directly off the solar panels. I found out I can put a lot of heat into it and I have a hard time getting all the heat out of it. So I put a fan behind it and I can help blow the heat out or I've got a thing in the front where I can blow air up into it and up through the center. Let me show you what it looks like inside. Sorry about that. Those rocks get pretty darn hot in there. That air blows up through them. I put the lid on and leave it cocked a little bit. That way the heat can come out and dissipate faster. I have found out if you don't get the heat out of it before you heat it up the next day, it accumulates, and I end up burning up the elements if I get it too hot. Here's a worksheet of a couple of days of recording the voltages and, and the amperages multiplying the voltage times the amps to get the wattage. Even on a fairly cloudy day, I got 9,450 watt hours. On a real sunny day, I come up with 11,727 watt hours. It normally likes to run around 220 volts when the sun is straight up and it gets 8.6 amps, maybe seven amps out of it. This is what the tank looked like to start with. I think it's the 11 gallon grease barrel tank. And you see the pipe that I put inside to go up through the center. I put fire bricks in the bottom just to keep the heat off the wheels and off the floor underneath. This shows the heating coil, a 2200 watt heating coil that I kind of expanded out. And it shows the wires in it and it shows the uh, wire connector there, ceramic connector where you put one end of the wire into it, the other end from the heating element and tighten the screws down and it seems to work pretty good. Now I did burn up a couple of heating elements in it when it was in the sand and when I had that pipe up the center because I think the pipe pushed the heat to the outside more than I wanted it to and it dissipated out faster. So I went back and cut that pipe off and just left the horizontal part in it. And I put rocks in the center part now with a heating element rather than sand where it touches the elements. I need a little bit of air in there because I burn up a heating element too in the sand when I had residual heat in the next day and it kept building up on it. Let me just show you some of the components in it now and where I got them, most of them I bought on Amazon. This is one showing the fire bricks put in the bottom. This is the inline fuse that I put from the solar panels over to the, to the uh, control box, just so in case there anything shorted out, the fuse would blow rather than burn something up. This shows it installed underneath the solar panels or against the wall. Those solar panels are hinged at the top so I can raise them up if I need to to get more direct contact with the sun. This shows the actual switch that I used. I burn up several switches trying to make them work with DC current. It's very difficult to control them. So you need a special fuse like this one that comes directly from the solar panels and they're, and they're made to run the high voltage DC. This shows the high temperature wire that I used inside the tanks. I try to keep it in the sand as close to the metal containers I can, or it's the coolest, but I don't want it to touch the metal container. This is the ceramic fittings that I use to connect the wires to the heating elements. These are the heating elements from electric stovetop. They're probably the most important part of the sand heater. I think two of these were 1500 watts 
and two of them I think were 2200 watts if I remember correctly you kind of cut them apart the little bit band on them and then kind of pull them apart so they spring out a ways and just space the heat a lot better here's a picture of the voltmeter that I use I like to watch it and the clouds come over it goes down gets sunny again it goes back up I run about 220 volts it draws about uh, seven amps of current i've got these heaters so i can take them out in the summertime bring them back in next fall or next winter I've got one on wheels the other night just put on a cart and i wheel them out the door and down the ramp that we happen to have and i just store them back here on the patio I'm outside the north end of the house now, showing you the switch that I use, showing you the solar panels. There's 10 of them there, but I only use eight of them because I found out 10 of them was too much and I kept burning the heater up. Those solar panels will be used in the summertime to charge up my electric golf cart. It's kind of our run around town golf cart. We get a lot of use out of it and I can just use the panels to charge it up. Something else to show you is an inline fuse on the extension cord. I put on the ones that run on AC. It's a 15 amp circuit breaker. I just wanted that to make it more safe. And I find I have the wires going through a two inch PV ABS pipe into the house so I don't have to run them through the screen doors or underneath the door. I just stuff a rag in there to keep the air out of it. That's the outside part of the mini split we have, the air conditioners that we use, the furnace in the house. We still use a little bit, but not very much. We do have a wall heater, natural gas also. And we just kind of use the furnace as a backup if we don't have enough power or enough sunshine to keep the other stuff going. The wire that I'm using from the solar panels to the switch and on into the heater is actually just a 12 gauge landscaping wire. I've got about 100 feet of it. Seems to work fine. It hadn't got hot yet. I will put a metal conduit over, a flexible conduit over it though, when I put it back in the house next, next fall. The last picture I'll show you is us warming up some pizza on it. The top of it gets about 170 degrees. The side of the tanks will get up to 300 degrees. So yes, a kid could get burnt on it or an animal. They probably won't get burnt more than once though. So. And if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and put them down below. Hope there's some stuff in here that somebody can use. And thank you.